Cole and Brandon, they be podcasting all day Holding down the mic, yeah, they got something to say Talking about life, love, and all the latest news Spit the fire like dragons, lighting up the fuse Chipotle, that's the place where they like to eat Burrito bowls so good, they can't be beat You know, by now, that ain't even a lane Chipotle's got the flavor, driving in the same Pizza slaps, no doubt, it's a tasty treat Goodness, man, it can't be pasta's cool and all, but it just can't. Co pipe and not slice floating on the air. The pizza slaps, no doubt, it's a tasty treat. The cheesy goodness, man, it can't be me. Pasta's cool and all, but it just can't care. To a pipe and I slice floating on the air. I'm going to, I think I'm going to ask these in kind of, I'm going to ask these in, in a different way as best I can each time. Okay. So if you had to choose that you could eat pasta or pizza for the rest of your life, as many times as you want, and it has no ill effect on your health oh, whatsoever. Great way to ask this. Which one would you choose? Pasta or pizza? Pizza. Okay. Every day of the week. Yeah. Why would you choose pizza? 24 seven. Because I was I was actually thinking, well, I would choose pizza, but pasta is probably healthier for you. So maybe pasta would help me go further in life, you know. But no health side effects, that's not the word, um, then I would choose pizza yeah. every day. Well, the variance that's possible, I mean, anything is pizza now. So, like, you can have whatever you want. Yeah, I think the pizza, the variants of pizza are just the variations you can do topping wise too. It's significantly higher than pasta, but could you make all of the varieties of what pizza is now into a pasta, like a barbecue chicken pasta? You know what I mean? Yeah. Or is it too, or is it too frowned upon Every because variety. of pasta? I'm just thinking like a Hawaiian pizza, but in pasta form. Yeah. That sounds disgusting. <laughs> which is wild, right? Because it's just, it's kind of the same. It's the, the same thing. It's dough, which is instead of a, a bread or a dough, it's noodles. But then because it goes into a, maybe it's a textural thing. I think that's what it is. Yeah. When you just have, when you have like no crunch inside of a pasta, but on a pizza, you can have a little crispy. Uh, I'm just thinking about the bite of like a, a penne pasta with pineapple and <laughs> ham. Yeah, that would uh, that would tick off a lot of disgusting. Italians. It's already bad enough. It's on pizza. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be pizza, right? I mean, yeah, no. Put, I would choose let, pizza. let us know if you choose pasta and why. Like, I I gotta know why. Well, I asked this last night to my older group, and someone brought up like pasta can also be mac and cheese. If you're a big mac and cheese fan, which I get that, which I'm not a big mac and cheese, but fan. I can also put mac and cheese on pizza. That exists. <laughs> you know. It does, sadly <laughs> enough. I think also the dough versus noodles, your main carbohydrate inside of the two. Noodles, yeah, they can change texture. A little, no, not actually texture. You kind of want al dente pasta. They can change noodles or penne or, or elbow, whatever different. Yeah. But I think that with a pizza dough, you can have thin crust, thick crust. You can have a chewier dough. You can have a crispier dough. I think it's mm -hmm. just the, the variety of what you get with pizza. I agree. Pizza is the answer. Have you made fresh pasta? No. And if but you I, have, like, when's the last time you had it? No, I we've guess. never, we've never done the, we've never done that actually. Actually, I don't think we have. No. It's. A, I really want to do it. I want to try it. I mean, I, I've tried it in the past, but it didn't really hit as much. Not, not because the pasta was bad or better. I just think they put it in. Um, in like a chicken noodle soup. So it was like just another texture in there instead of the pasta being the focus. Yeah. No, I can see that. You gotta So I wanna try it. I wanna see if it's like actually better or that much better. Yeah, depending on what type of noodles you do, I don't think if you just do like noodle I don't I don't know. It's yeah. not I don't think it's really that hard. But I've done pizza dough. I do I mean whenever I do my 
my pizzas, which my fridge has gone from being burrito full. Now it's just pizza full all the time. <laughs> and uh, I just make these massive thin crust, just meat loaded pizzas. And I make my own dough every single time I do that, which is, it's good. If you didn't know how to do it, it's not hard either. All right, next one. And I guess you could just take all of these with the whole sense of however much you want to eat it. It doesn't affect your health whatsoever. Mm. We're not a health or sports related podcast whatsoever. Not. Yeah. Burger not even or- a little bit. <laughs> Go to the next one. Go to the Wait, next I, podcast. At the end of this episode, depending on how fiery I get as we go through this and how much energy I maintain as we go through this, I have a kind of a controversial, uh, very opinionated topic on sports performance that I do maybe want to get into. So we'll see. All right. So stay for the end for the actual sports performance <laughs> as information always. as always. All right. Burger or steak? I don't know what you are on this one, mm. to be honest. I've always been a steak, man. Um. I mean, but if I'm taking the same logic that I took from pizza to pasta, pizza versus pasta, then burger should win over steak because of the amount of variance that you can have with a burger. Yeah, but you don't have to make this logical. What is your what is your soul tell? You? Uh, I like steak more. I, I like the quality of steak, like beef compared to hamburger beef. But I, I don't think it says – it's not as drastic – Right. If you choose burger, I'm not offended. If you choose pasta, I am a little bit offended. <laughs> so, steak is my answer. I, I I go along the same lines with the pizza to burger combo. There's just so much more to a burger. I actually have a video come out this weekend talking about this. Um, it's just you you get a bun, you've got bacon, you have all of this stuff you can put on it that umami, salty, sweet, whatever. I just like the variety. Even though I, in a mood, you know, one to two times out of ten, I was like, I just want a steak. I'll go for a steak. But for me, yeah. it's, I love burgers. Burgers are where it's at. You can make it. You know, someone's always like, you have a steak burger. I was like, yeah, but a steak burger, it's not really the same. It's like, well, it's like having a steak versus having like a Philly cheese steak. It's still steak, but it's not. It doesn't hit the same note as mm-hmm. like just eating a steak. It's true. It's it's def yeah, that's different. Yeah, that's all I got. Uh, I, that one I'm not. That one I'm not that opinionated on. Yeah, they're both. I mean, most of the stuff that I put on here, they're all good, anyways. Mm-hmm. Chipotle or Qdoba? Now, this one I did put on the. This was on the Instagram last week. Yes, I did see this one. Chipotle one. Chipotle one. Yeah, but barely yeah. though. No, it's Qdoba. Sometimes my brain messes up. I haven't had either in a while. I gotta go. Yeah, yeah. Kidoba is kind of better. <laughs> I think free queso, free queso. I know. I, I free I, queso. I think people that choose Kidoba being better than Chipotle need to eat them side by side and understand how bland Kidoba really is. <laughs> if you don't throw that queso in there, it's. Uh, I mean, it's not good. It's still good, but it's it's, it's like. Not- it's not that good. It's not seasoned. It's yeah. it's it's missing some some spice. I, I will think. take I will take free queso with bland everything else every day of the week. Yeah, every single day of the week. Well, it's so my birthday's tomorrow, and I just got an email earlier today about oh, sh- I get a free I get a I get a free I get a free uh, chips and queso. So I will be going to Qdoba. Tomorrow, as I'm roasting Qdoba, <laughs> I'm going to Qdoba to get some free chips and Good. queso and a burrito. Obviously, I wonder how many like birthday things are there. Uh, that was a stupid question. That no, was a really saying. no, I know, but that was a stupid way to ask that. What do you think? There's got to be like a video out there of someone like min maxing birthday like specials or birthday like gifts that like restaurants and businesses give out. I told myself on the way driving home this morning when I'm thinking about pod like topics to do that I wasn't going to bring up Good Mythical Morning, but now you've already ruined it because Good Mythical Morning, they have several episodes where they'll have like a fake birthday party. Yeah. And people will come in with what their birthday gift is and what you have to do to get it from a restaurant. Because sometimes you just sign up for an email. Sometimes there's other stuff. And then they all right, and depending on what it is, quality or what they have to do, they decide whether which one's the best. So they mm-hmm. have done that slightly on Good Mythical Morning. Okay, I would. I'm gonna watch that. I've been getting back into them. 
I really have. Ever since uh, summer hit, I have free time, so I just browse YouTube <laughs> and yeah. watch watch yeah. stuff. They the they did a ma- the last episode they did was a like magic show one, which was kind of yeah. interesting. That one was did, funny. Did you see it when yeah. Link did the light bulb in his mouth? Yeah, that, <laughs> I liked it. He made up a trick. <laughs> was it was so fun. good. It was that episode was great. I just <laughs> they gave him the right ingredients, and he just completely yeah, he nailed it. Kind of <laughs> made up his own one. So on the Mexican train here, would you rather have a hard shell taco or a soft shell taco? You know, growing up, my family was hard shell taco people, and I just didn't know the life that existed beyond that. Mm -hmm. And then I found my oasis in soft shell tacos. Okay. And when you think, yeah. When you think of a soft shell taco, are you thinking more of like a, a a corn tortilla that it's a, a soft cell where you kind of pick it up and everything kind of falls out? Or are you thinking more like along the lines of like Taco Bell? Taco Bell. Okay. Wait. Like a Did flour say... tortilla. Corn yes. versus flour. Yes. Taco Bell. Okay. Yes. Well, so I the thing that bothers me about a soft taco, if it's not like a corn one that's like open and everything's kind of falling out, almost like a food truck style one. Mm-hmm. It's like, to what point is this actually more or less a burrito? Yeah, I agree. The The lines are really blurry with sh- soft shell taco. Wow. Say that 10 times fast. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think there's a clear difference still. I'm not going to lie. I feel like the ingredients of the actual thing make it a taco versus a burrito. So there's like a line. So if you add, let's say, beans to it, but it's not closed like a burrito and it's open, does that make it a burrito? That's a stupid burrito. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What what defines a burrito versus a taco? Is it the fact that I it's bet it's the ingredients. Rolled a certain way? Let's, let's, let's Google that. Is it uh, the way it's rolled or the ingredients or a combination of the two? Definition. It's a like Mexican a skin dish consisting of a tortilla rolled around a filling, typically of beans or ground or shredded beef. Let's look up taco definition now. Taco definition. A Mexican dish consisting of a fried tortilla, typically folded. Consisting with various mixtures. So I think it's the fact that a taco is folded Mm -hmm. and a burrito is rolled. Okay. So then it goes now as a burrito in a wrap, the same thing. Now I think that just involves the ingredients. That's the ingredients for sure. Okay. So taco, it's like the hot dog is a taco kind of thing. It's the hot dog is a sandwich. Yeah. Hot dog is not a taco. Maybe a hot dog. Or, a no, taco. no, no. The hot dog is a taco. The hamburger. No. What's the thing? I don't know either. I know. You confused me after I messed it up, I think. Or maybe I Soup is a up. cereal, right? Yep, exactly. All right. Next one. Waffles or pancakes? <laughs> Again, I will stand by this forever. Mm-hmm. I like it. There are bad waffles in the world. Mm-hmm. There are less bad pancakes in the world. Mm. What about the first one you cook in the pan? So I choose pancakes because typically I'm not going to be disappointed by a pancake. And I'm often disappointed by waffles. If I order waffles, the variance is wide. It could be soft and mushy, or it could be hard and crunchy, or it could be somewhere in the middle. Pancakes, they could be fluffy or they could be less fluffy. They could be a little bit dry or they could be moist. So let me ask you this in reference to that. Let's say you had the perfect, your idea of a perfect pancake waffles. and a perfect. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. I like that. So waffles, I would choose waffles as well. I would choose waffles if it was perfect. Okay. But pancakes are typically much more consistent Mm -hmm. and I'm serious. If you don't believe me, go out, order a waffle at a random place, not like 
not like a Waffle House where it's the same every time. Oh man, Waffle House sounds. And I'm not, and right I'm now. not saying, and that makes my argument sound stupid because it's like, well, just go to one place. But like seriously, if you just randomly get a waffle, let's say at a hotel, hotel breakfast bar is a perfect example. If you got a waffle there versus a pancake, the pancake's probably going to be better. Fair enough. I know I, I agree with that. Actually, Waffle House that sounds so good. We live right. There's one right down the street, and I still haven't been. What? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll go when I'm. I'll go when I'm on a vacation. Wait, let's let's see if there's one here. There's got to be one here, right? Yeah, there's got to be a Waffle House. I don't know the last time I had a Waffle House. I don't know. I don't, dude. There isn't one. Dang, that's so sad. Well, there's a steak and the steak and shake just opened up down the street from us, and I'm probably gonna be hitting up steak and shake. I went recently. Mm. Forgot how good it was. Yeah. You know. Just nice. forgot how good it is. Okay, Steak and Shake or Freddy's? I haven't had Freddy's enough to really. Mm. I've only had Freddy's okay. once. I can't really voice an opinion there. I think I like. I think I guess definitely say I liked their. I like Steak and Shake's fries more though. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, but uh, I, I Steak and Shake sounds so good. A milkshake too. Not not even just a burger and fries. Like let's go the whole Dude, way. Dude, their milkshakes are crazy. Yeah, it sounds amazing. I, I know that sounds like. It should be obvious. You'd be like, yeah, of course their milkshakes are good. But they're another level. Yeah. <laughs> like, if you get a milkshake at just, again, a random place, like a Five Guys milkshake, not that great compared to Steak and Shake. Well, what is your opinion on Steak and Shake versus Freddy's then? Um, we had both semi recently. And we had Freddy's first. And we we're like, man, this was pretty good. And then we had Steak and Shake. And we we're like, wow. It just is. It's much better. Okay. But maybe it was just the cook of our burger that day or something. I don't know. Yeah. No, steak and shake sounds so good. All right. A couple more food questions here. This goes along the lines with waffles and pancakes. Yeah. Sausage or bacon? This is tough. I go through like phases mm -hmm. of which one I order at breakfast places. So like some days I'm really feeling sausage. Some days I'm really feeling bacon. I th you know what? I'm going to go back to it. I really think you can have bad bacon. I haven't really had a bad sausage, though. I was just thinking that. You know? It, the bacon, the cook variants, you can have, like, wet, awful, soggy bacon. And you can have crunchy, like, it gets stuck in your teeth kind of bacon. So, sausage, it's links or it's patties, and it's kind of cooked the same. Yeah. It's hard to mess up sausage. I, uh, it is an in-between for me because these two are, I think it'd be the most challenging because it's like a preference of what am I eating it with? What am I mm -hmm. eating it on? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, like breakfast, I, I say more often than not, I'm not going to cook sausages home as much as I'll do bacon because it's probably in a, in an overall calorie sense, regular sausage, I think a little bit more dense than actual bacon. So whenever I go out and get something on, like special and it's like a, a like when we go to maya which is this bagel place in louisville that's amazing i just can't not get the sausage because it's but it's so good so that one's always weird but i do have a i do have an odd preference of if i'm eating pancakes or waffles if i'm eating waffles i prefer to have bacon i don't know why and if i'm eating pancakes i prefer to have sausage hmm. i think it's maybe just something my dad always did when, and that just kind of stuck with me but i would eat it either way I think that's really weird. <laughs> I mean, it is weird. Yeah, like, I think yeah. that's I think that's weird, man. Yep, I think so too. But that's okay. okay. Yeah. It's okay. All right, last one. I don't know if you read a couple of the ones on the list here, but the <laughs> you should read while I'm saying this. Uh, the last one, I is, did. I okay. did. I remember now. Yeah. Okay. I, so, I'm excited. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Toasted sandwich or a non-toasted sandwich? Toasted every time. Mm -hmm. Toasted every time. It. I can't picture a scenario where toasted loses. I tell you what, I'm a very much a toasted person. Like I want a toasted one. I've never really been a fan of Jimmy John's. Like oh, there's like it's just so cold. Okay. <clears throat> Jimmy John's, Penn Station, Jersey Mike's, or what's the other one? Exactly. There's too many. There's too many. There's like which one? There's which? Well, that's too toasted. many. Too many. 
we need to start eliminating the competition. Okay. Subway. Real capitalist person over here. Just get rid of them. Let's make one sandwich shop. Let's have them all come together, all of them, and say, what are we going to offer the people of America now? Because we need one place to go to. I'm tired of, like, I don't go to them. I don't go to them because there's too many variants. And their niche is like, oh, we, we have this type of sandwich. Our fries taste this much different. Or Subway's like, we don't have fries. Like, that's the variance level that we're talking about with these companies. Just get rid of all of them. Let's make one company, yep, monopolize the market. One company and said, this is your sandwich, guys. This is your sandwich? You get toasted or not? That's it. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't <laughs> matter. This is the sandwich we're offering. Buy it or leave. Yeah. That's what I want. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I, I I hate all of the variants with it. Well, if you because they're selling one. the same thing. Well, I mean, if I look at Jamie John's versus Jersey Mike's, though, Jersey Mike's is significantly better. How? It's just better. It's How? definitely. It's just better. I don't know. It's, I just. I just. <laughs> I, I just. <laughs> I just. I just. I, and it, it goes right into your point. Like I don't know why it's better. Exactly. It's just better because they're all exactly. The same. It's just. It's marketing. It's branding. It's advertising. That's it. It's. That's all it is. I think the amount of meat and the, I don't know, I just Jimmy, uh, Jersey, Jimmy John's, I never liked it, but Jersey Mike's we recently started going to, and it's like the only non toasted sandwich. I'm like I'll eat this. It, it's just like, it's all, it's all stupid. It's all so dumb. Yeah. All right. Well, moving on. This is still, yeah. <laughs> I, I was trying to make a list of like hacks or food stuff that I think when I go out and do fast food, and I want to see if you even have one off the top of your head. If you don't, that's okay. Not necessarily hacks. I guess hacks isn't the right word. I, also... I kind of do have one hack. That's okay, perfect. A, but... So one of the ones that I'll always die on this hill with is when it comes to Chick-fil-A. I probably said this in the podcast before, but that's fine. Chick-fil-A, the nuggets. What is that noise? Do you hear that? Oh. That's okay. That was the ice maker. It just like randomly will go off. That's the first time I ever heard that. I've had hundreds of almost 100 hour podcast. Maybe. Yeah. That's wild. Oopsies. Um, sorry. Chick fil A's strips are better than their nuggets. That's one. I'm just going to go yeah, through the list. I'm I still gonna... hate that one. I still okay. hate that opinion. I'm going to bank going. them. At, I'm going to yeah. just gonna crank them my list. And then yeah. Can... So I think Chick fil A's strips are better than their nuggets. They just are. I, obviously, I think they're also cooked differently. If you go to Chipotle, one component that a lot of people I don't think get that you should definitely try at least once, and I don't think it'll change your mind on how, the way that Chipotle tastes, is get their corn salsa. I know it sounds weird to put corn in your, in your your burrito or your bowl, but try the corn salsa. Five Guys, if you go to Five Guys, get the Cajun fries. If you never heard about their Cajun fries, get their Cajun fries. And if your Five Guys does not cook their fries enough, which happens – at some of the five guys for some reason. The one there's one in Louisville that does a great job. All the other ones is just like, why are these soggy? You can ask for them to cook it a little bit longer. Like you can ask them for their to be extra cooked. So Cajun fries are five guys. And then my last one is also at Chick-fil-A. If you've never mixed the Polynesian sauce with the spicy sriracha sauce, mix them together and it makes this really, really mm. good sauce. Uh, that I think they use in one of their restaurants that's like Hawaiian themed that's yeah. in Hawaii. What do you got? I have one thing. The yeah. McDonald's app is kind of goaded, first of all. Um, <laughs> this might sound like psycho behavior, but the way it works, they have deals, daily deals, and it, they're kind of pretty solid, like a free any size fry with minimum purchase of $2. A large fry is like 3 or $4 now. So you can basically get a large fry with purchasing two dollars of something <laughs> what i do sometimes is i min max the app so the way it works is if you use one deal you can't use another deal for 15 minutes okay so here's how you do it place your order drive to the mcdonald's go through the drive through okay so my order would probably be something like a large fry and a drink, something to cover the $2, right? 
-hmm. So I've spent $2 for a large fry and a large Coke. Okay. And then another deal on here is like 30% off your purchase of five more dollars. By the time I go through the drive through, it's been 15 minutes. So I park, I make my second order with the entree and I just get a full meal for around $6 of a large fry, a large drink and a burger, which sounds stupid, but it's a deal. And I go through the drive through again a second time. Let me ask you this. Do you, when you get your fries, do you wait to eat them with your burger? No, immediately. Okay. I eat them immediately. That's the correct answer. Piping hot, burning my fingers and burning my mouth. That's almost a hack for McDonald's because their fries need to be piping hot from the, yep, the high They do. Quality. They have to. They have yeah. to be. So if you ever are feeling lonely <laughs> and want to try something, go through the McDonald's drive through twice. If okay? you want <laughs> – if you want it is hot. sad. I will say when I go through the second time, they're like, what are you doing here, dude? Go <laughs> home. Go home, man. If you, if you need 15 minutes to yourself and you want piping hot fries to eat with your your, your Coke and then go back in the drive through Dude, pretty, I mean. It's pretty funny. But yeah, so that's what I do. And the same technique can be used with two phones as well at the same time. You just say you have two mobile orders. You're wild, dude. Dude, you can get yourself a nice, nice meal. How much money are you saving when doing that, though? Do you know? Um, I don't know. Four bucks? Yeah, probably four or five bucks. Yeah. Just kind of worth it. Yeah, that's fine. Man. Because especially when the investment of time is pretty much the same. Yeah, I mean, eating your fries pretty much and all the that. Same. Yeah, unless you don't want to eat your fries without your, your burger or whatnot. Actually, yeah. Josh Wiseman just did a fast food fry review with a guy and they did all the fast food restaurants yeah. and a very alarming and ridiculous component of that video was a lot of the fries. The issue was they were soggy and that's, that's mm -hmm. one of, that's one of my qualms with Chick-fil-A is just cook your fries a little bit longer. What are we doing? Um, I don't get it. Everyone. I think most people agree that your fries are a little soggy. So let's just go a little bit further with that fry, please. <laughs> I don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me. It's like, I yeah. think, I think if I put a, you know, I put a poll up, I've been doing a lot of polls and it was like, do you think Chick-fil-A's fries are too soggy? Should they be cooked? Like, I think, I think we'd be 75% up and they need to be cooked for a little bit longer. And there's a lot of the fries they did that was like that. And also fry that one was KFC. Really? No, yeah. KFC won that. His little. What? They did, yeah. KFC won. No clue. Maybe I gotta go try today. You know, <laughs> just we're just gonna go to different fast food places today. I'm gonna go to Steak and Shake, and then yeah, uh, that yeah, sounds I'll, delicious. It does. I'm like, I I'll, right when we get done with the podcast because I'm up at five on Thursdays. I literally immediately go eat food. I'm eating like burritos <laughs> or enchiladas at like ten thirty. Good. The yeah, I'm so hungry Good. right now. Okay, there's our food hacks. Oh God, are you, you going to the next section? Yeah, we're going to dabble in this a little bit and see okay. where it goes. <clears throat> All right. It's not as alarming as it looks. Uh, at uh, face sure. What, okay. what I say. <laughs> Go ahead and just say it. Go ahead and just say it out loud. Well, I'm going to have to preface it because if I just nope. say it out loud, nope, I'm going to sound say it. crazy. All right. Just I'll, say it. Okay. I'm going to read off what I sent Cole and then I'll dial it back in so you guys can have an idea of how Cole's feeling about this right now. So I emailed him just this morning, probably about 30 minutes for the pot. Yep. <laughs> And after the other food stuff, it says <laughs> the pyramid. <laughs> the pyramid was a huge generator. Ah, uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, we got a crazy person. <laughs> Han <laughs> Hancock versus Dibble, lost civilization, drill holes in pyramid. If they use the drill, where is the drill? That's the first line. There's another one. Just you wait. The next line. <laughs> the moon landing was faked. The interviews of Armstrong post and at the anniversary and the flag waving. So are you ready to go down some conspiracy theories a little bit? Wow. Conspiracy? You really butchered that one. Yeah. Con conspiracy theories a little bit. There you go. Uh, sure. I have one that I actually talked about with a friend recently. So which one you got? Let's get them all out there in the beginning here. And we'll, oh, we'll I think ride. that like anthropology, I think they just make stuff up. And like what, what's an example 
like um, when they find a pot in the ground and they make a story revolving around that pot, they don't know anything. They're just making it up. It's interesting you said that because when it comes to the reason I put this on here is over the past, I'd say two weeks or so since we've did the last podcast, there's been a couple of interesting interviews, podcasts with archaeologists uh, Hancock's not, he's a journalist and I've been listening to them and they've been pretty interesting and not saying I sway one way or the other on these conspiracy theories. It's more or less, I find them interesting. Yeah. When, yeah. when you, when you talk about the pot one, I just finished one today. I also don't fully believe that. I just, I like to subscribe to it a little bit. Yeah. The one I finished this morning was with a gentleman, uh, that he's, he is an archeologist and he has this theory that the pyramid wasn't actually a tomb. It was a generator. And one of, and this doesn't relate to why it's generator, but the pots that they found at the pyramid, if you look at the top of the circle of the, all of the pots they found that were intact, it's a perfect circle. And when they say perfect circle, they say it's off by like half a hair's width. Yeah, And that's what leads to going down the further of this rabbit hole of, why it was a generator, why there's stuff about the pyramids that seem to be not feasible, like the drill holes in it. So that's where we're kind of going here a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> Dude, here's a conspiracy theory. We have another someone in the audience. So that's kind of crazy. <laughs> I think that must be, what if it's just like Riverside? The that's what I was wondering. Would, someone's yeah. just, what, what are these two doing? Yeah, right I know. Boy? Well, if you're in there, uh, we're going to go down some fun times here. <laughs> and it's not that I'm an expert. It's it's more like, obviously I'm not an expert whatsoever. I just listen to a couple of podcasts. But the one that stem <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst. That is the worst thing you could say before giving information to people. No, no. So I'm not even going to give information. Yo, I just like listen to some stuff and I'm about to tell you what's up. You know, I'm about to tell you the truth. You uh, must believe me. No, I'm not even going to really get into the details. I'm just going to say like stuff they talked about. Yeah. And what stemmed all of this was, I guess, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, this guy named Graham Hancock. Graham Hancock, Hancock he's a journalist that is going around the world and look at different archaeological, archaeological sites and talk to different archaeologists and geologists and has this theory that there's a lost civilization. And there's he's got several shows on Netflix. But in the archaeological world or the science world, a lot of people think he's doing pseudoscience. Okay. But if you listen to what he has to say, it's like, man, this is pretty compelling. But Joe Rogan had him on with a guy named uh, Flint Dibble, who is a real archaeologist. And Flint and Dibble, they had a debate for like four and a half hours of basically bringing up one their side. Like Hancock would bring up his side, and then Dibble would refute it or debate it, and they'd go back and forth. And that four and a half hours is interesting, not in the sense of just like what they talk about, but also, hey, we can actually have a debate about something that's controversial and interesting without just yelling at each other. And Rogan did a great job of mediating it, mm -hmm. and it was a really fun episode of just – Something that's we may never really have the answer to. Yeah, but it was cool. I took a class that kind of not talked about debating, but just talked about how you have healthy conversations with people. And one of the things they talk about is pushing past positions. This is super random, and maybe this is some information that will help you all. You go past positions and go to people's interests instead. So, um, for example, not this isn't too political, but just like gun control. So people have like positions, how they feel about gun control. But then the position that underlies it would be um, people's safety. Everyone wants people to be safe. They mm -hmm. just go about it in different positions on how they think people should be safe. So everyone's underlying um, interest is that people's safety should be at the forefront. So, so that's you, how you, that's how you should discuss and bring up a conversation is find your shared interests and what you have in common and then how you go from there into no, your positions. Yeah, no, it sounds good. I like that. 
Yeah, I mean that's when they go on that episode. They they go back and forth, and it does get heated a little bit. Not yeah, necessarily yeah. heated, but like I mean, they're very passionate about. Yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they both they're both of their objective, I guess, to to kind of what you're saying. Their objective is to try to find the truth as best mm-hmm. as possible, being fair to not necessarily people's opinions, but just like looking at certain stuff that we have set in stone based on history and from a different lens. And, yeah, well, uh, exactly. Yeah, so that's cool. I mean, that's a good one. And then the other one was the moon landing. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I used to be a subscriber, but it was fake. Uh, that one is interesting. Not only some of the information that is brought up, but Rogan really, be, he's devil's advocate to a lot of it. And the funny part is the guy, his last name is Sibel, Sibel, Sibel. And every single time Jamie, which is their producer, is trying to look up some of the information, he goes, yeah, just got to go to my website. Just go to my website. So she goes, I don't know about that. <laughs> but... At the end of all of that episode, they do show these interviews with Armstrong, so the guys that went to the moon. Yeah. That's where I was just like, what? And there's – I'll have to send it to you after, uh, whether you want to watch it or not. But the interviews with Armstrong, it's like, hmm. It's just intriguing. Not that I well, subscribe to – Here's what I'll say. Fake. <laughs> I, would, I would love to see all of the interviews that Armstrong has ever done because – I cannot imagine how many times he's had to answer the question like, yo, is this fake? Did you really go up there? What did you see? And he has to like give some stupid PR answer and he probably gets tired of it, you know? Well, interesting enough, and this is just based on what they said. Yeah. Apparently he really doesn't do interviews anymore and he never yeah. really, he never really did when he came back. And one of their arguments that they bring up, or I guess he brings up, I don't know if Rogan's on this one either, is that if you had someone that we that the U.S. did this huge feat in a short amount of time to be able to get to the moon with all this time, and all this technology, all this money, he would be the poster child of like mm-hmm. going around. Like, but he's Definitely. not. So it's like, okay, that's also I mean, conspiracy or not. It's it's interesting is all I have to say. I'm not yeah. saying that. I think it's what are, How many people have gone to the moon, have touched the moon? Over, under, 30 and a half. Well, I mean, I'm thinking after listening to that conspiracy, zero, dude. They didn't go. Oh, my they God. Whatever. <laughs> All right. They faked it. What are you talking about? Over, under, 30 and a half. Over, under, under. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, that was a terrible line. 12 people. I was literally going to say like 12. I no, you to, weren't. Yes, yes, I was no, say you I weren't. Was <laughs> I was going to say 12. I don't know how many trips they took. But, yeah. Well... The last person to touch the moon was in 1972. So long ago. Dude, that's 52 years ago. Yeah. So other stuff they get into with like technology differences and all that. It's Dude, it's... yeah. I mean, the Apollo 11 was like <laughs> built on the power of like our microwaves. Yeah. Just interesting, right? Unreal. And now you now you want to listen to it. <laughs> the guy's kind no, of annoying I, here, though. I... <laughs> the whole time, the whole time he's like he was like, and that's why they faked it. It's like, all right, hold on, dude. You can't say this every 10 minutes. It's like, when, <laughs> yeah, because this looks like this, it's they, that one thing basically yeah. says, yeah, that's what he kind of goes around. But Yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know why we don't go back. I guess because we've done it, but whatever, whatever, whatever. All right, well, let's, let's get on something that I know you're definitely interested in. And I have, he's definitely been brought to my eyes a little so bit. basketball podcast <laughs> we are back anthony edwards yeah he's a beast dude never really knew about him he's dude, popping he's off in the playoffs animal uh he i saw this morning right beforehand right and i was anyone want to talk about him and i saw this like that's perfect in an interview he was asked who is who you think is the the greatest player of all time and he says Kevin Durant, like Kevin Durant. He's like, who's mm-hmm. one of your favorite? He's one of his favorites, and he thinks he's one of the greatest of all time. Well, he just swept the Suns mm-hmm. with Kevin Durant on it. So the video is, uh, imagine being the hero, and then you become your hero's villain. I was like, dang, that hit hard. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. He is, he is bad, man. He's such a good player. He is such a good player. There's not much to say other than that. Like he's he's really young too, so people are, are speculating that he could be like the new face of the NBA, mm-hmm. kind of take over the LeBron, uh, Curry, and Durant hole that's about to exist. Because there's 
quite a few players that are like really good. But growing up late 2000s, 2010s, I mean, the three big names of basketball are LeBron, Steph Curry, and Kevin Durant. So we'll see uh, if he turns into one of them. I think he will. Yeah, I mean, he's got... I I'm gambling now that he's going to be, like, the guy of the NBA. Yeah, I mean, he's got the attitude. I mean, he's 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 a powerhouse. It's interesting. I've watched him yeah, a little bit. Uh, yeah, the, the fact that they swept the Suns when you have... I mean, it's like the worst superstar team of all time is, is kind of the joke. <laughs> It's like, dang, it's, I, it's really bad. I, that game, I knew, like, they're just done. They just, yeah. they're done. They're done. They're, yeah. they're burnt. Yeah. Those guys, the Suns, were like, nope. <laughs> yeah. But what I is LeBron going to do? Um, people are saying that he's, <laughs> yeah, I think he'll still be playing by being 100% honest. It's just curious as to where he will play. I think I've been watching a lot of basketball podcasts still. Love it. Um, they think that he's going to test the waters of free agency, but more than likely he'll sign with the Lakers again. And then if he wants to leave, he'll do a sign and trade. So he'll sign with the Lakers and then get traded. So the Lakers get assets back. Okay. Well, isn't his son is in the, is he going in the draft? Has that been, um, I don't know. Uh, the draft is after the uh, championship. Yeah, but is he? He isn't he, he like he he declared for the draft, but he also left his eligibility open to stay in college. Okay. So the way that works, I think, is if you declare for the draft, you also have to like say that you might not commit if you get drafted. Okay. So like, and that makes your draft stock typically typically go down because they're like, oh, if I waste a draft pick on you and then you don't go with me, then I'm screwed basically mm. well the, i mean the whole i guess um kind of theory is that lebron potentially wants to go where his son gets picked yeah, up yeah, from, yeah which would be cool i mean could you imagine just well and that's your... why that's why all these mock drafts don't know where to put him because they don't know if a team is gonna like gamble draft him and then say all right lebron show up yeah, what do you do? Call LeBron you know, Morehand? It's yeah, like, hey, exactly. we're going to pick up your son. <laughs> exactly. Uh, if we pick him up, are you coming? Because you're going to make us a lot of money. You know? Because, like, and not to hate on him because he's still young and, like, developing a skill set, but he's also not, like, a top prospect by any means yet. And so people are like, well, I don't know if he's worth a first-round draft pick. I think that would be wild. If so it would be first. interesting. Yeah, no, 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 well, not, like, first overall. Oh, first like, round. No, yeah, yeah, yeah first right. round. Yeah. And so... Yeah. So I don't know. Be, be interesting. I don't know. Yeah. So it's after I'll be paying attention to the draft just because of that. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people will. Yeah. Well, I would just, and I mean, last thing I'll say on, on basketball, unless you had another point, I do have one more. You're good. Okay. I am planning on going to some Indiana fever games. My dad bought season tickets, so I'll be watching Caitlin Clark in the WNBA. Nice dude. Which is pretty sick. I'm excited know, to see it. I didn't know the Indiana fever was the name. That is the name. Fever, yeah. really? Yeah. They might want to rebrand that one. Fever? <laughs> I don't know. The Indiana Fever? Holy cow. What is their mascot? Just like Dude, someone with a head. I don't know. Let's look. <laughs> what, what is their mascot? Someone well, with a thermometer I, in their mouth? It's probably like, it's a dog is my guess. Freddy right. Fever. It's just like an amorphous I'm looking it up too. But no one has the shape and size of the Fever team mascot. Yeah, it's just a thing. Look it up. I can't even describe it for you. Yeah, no, I'm looking at it right now. It, it, it is literally indescribable. It is okay. a red blob of, of an organism. Yeah, if you're listening, I would definitely go look this up. Quite honestly, because that name is so terrible with this mascot is even worse, it kind of works. Like, yeah. what is this? It's thing? perfect. <laughs> it's just It's just ambiguous enough, you know? It's just a – looks like it's a blob of – it looks like a yeah. child doodled a mascot. And they're like, all right, let's make that in real mm -hmm. life. <laughs> yep. That's what we got. That's Anyways, what we want. I'm excited. Excited to watch some games. Yeah. No, it was uh, – I mean, the, the games have been fun this year too. I mean, I've, I've listened – I've watched so many. Just not even full games, quite That's honestly. That's crazy. Cause... Are you watching highlights or like are you putting it on at night? So if I'm gaming or – I've been watching games and falling asleep a lot. Of, like last night I was watching – and I fell asleep, but uh, I'm going to definitely watch. What's the game to that? No. 
Boston plays tonight. No, nope. not Boston. No, no, no. Uh, Pacers. That's the game. Yes. I'm going to watch that a little bit today. Yeah, Pacers play the Bucks. That one will be interesting. Yeah, I think uh, I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, Pacers are going to win, but yeah, it's what's okay. what? It's three to two, right? Pacers are up. Yeah, yeah, and, and the, the Bucks are missing their stars. So yeah, um, yeah, they've been missing him, uh, both of them, the entire mm-hmm. time, right? Which is uh, impressive. No, so they had Giannis. They haven't had Giannis. They had Dame for the first three games. Okay, yeah, I knew Giannis was out. I didn't know if they were both out the whole time. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I haven't really watched them play, but yeah, I think without. Good luck. <laughs> Pacers take it over, and then they're just gonna give up at the end. Yeah. Okay, I'm excited for your next point. We're off basketball now, so you can like uncover your ears. Um, I'm excited to see what you're gonna say about this. Which one, the YouTube one? Yeah. Okay. So, are you doing this? I really want to. It's you should. That, I really think you should. Uh, I've been going back and forth. I've already actually filmed one. I think I've said that. So <clears throat> what he's asking, he's talking about is I really want to take three months of not really doing any content for Edge uh, after the summer. Uh, you know, maybe uh, I'll, I'll kind of preload stuff and have it to post out really don't just not do much and just dedicate any of my extra time that's outside of coaching to just doing a food YouTube channel. I think you should, dude. You you talk about it so much. I think, and that's not a bad thing. I think that's a good thing. And I think you should provide yourself a space to do it. Yeah, I really want to try it. I think it would be fun. Uh, I already have so many recipes that I've been working on the past like year or two that just, I mean, for example, I mean, my lunch today, the enchiladas that I'm going to eat today, if someone else were to eat them, like Lauren's not big into Mexican food, it would just, they're just so good. I'm not trying to like toot my own horn. Yeah, and and I've even gone down the rabbit hole of like I make this like chipotle vinaigrette, like it's all these like components that I've just meshed together into yeah, making almost these, like new flavor. So I want to do it. I think I'm I think, going to. I think I think you should. I think you should do two videos a week. I know that I'm I'm like telling you what to do as your manager. Um, I think you should do one video that's you making food, and the other video of you eating food and trying other food outside food. Dude, that's such a good idea. Yeah, I like I know. that. That would be and, fun. Yeah, and then you rank the food. Not that you make, but you make you rank the food that you're eating out, and you're just showing a recipe of new food that you're making. Yeah, yeah I mean, <clears throat> the style of the videos uh, had to be like a template. And something with Lauren, like having Lauren to help me out with this one, it would be a, a project that we'd work on together on the weekends. Besides the editing, I mean, the editing would be all me. But I've shot one in... Uh, the hard part for me, and this might be something you could help me out with just on the podcast right now, just yeah, brainstorm is, is you there's having a personality, the right style of personality that's true to you, but you can actually film that. But it's right. a little, it's a little uppity. Yeah. So like, yeah, I, I totally get it, that. I don't know how I want to do it. So there's a couple of guys I've kind of based it off of. Uh, I'm never going to be, you know, the, who's the, who's the guy from, uh, Keith Lee the bear. Oh, you know, who's the guy from the bear? Uh, you know, he's got the, he's actually in the bear, but he, he does a food podcast. Oh, um, Matt, 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 um, um it's Matt. Yeah. Find it. He's cool. I've seen some of his videos. Uh, Maddie Matheson. So he yes. does. What a name, had, dude. What a name. His, his, personality is never like it's just there's so much it's one it's of a kind much. man so just like figuring a way you basically with those kind of videos just like all the other youtube you have like a template like you have your intro on how you present it with the b-roll of the yep. imagery and then after that you do the cooking but you're you know you're talking while you're cooking do you do it like say i'm the cooking guy where i have a road mic on and i talk during it there's all these in-betweens of kind of figuring that out yeah but hitting the style that works for me but then yeah also yeah i think I think you should go down the, and this is just an opinion, but I think the like the calm talking while you're cooking might be interesting. So instead of like that upbeat kind of like Maddie Matheson or whatever, I think you should just go like the, all right, so uh, tonight, guys, we're going to be making, um, you know, steak and fries, whatever. Yeah. And this is how what? I start my recipes, you know, and just really – Kind of even toned, not too like, all right. And tonight we're going to be doing. 
I mean, if I could do a movie theater like voice the entire time, and tonight we're making <laughs> cheesy potatoes. Like, st- that'd be kind of funny. Brian Lagerstrom is probably the one I, I would be closest to being able to. His style is like it's kind of like what you're saying. It's he's yeah, just he's, like really even, even keeled, yeah. you know. But then again, if that's not you, then you shouldn't do that. Yeah, you know, that's kind of the whole thing. I think is just being as genuine, but also hitting the style that you want to hit. Yeah. Brian Lagerstrom's probably the closest. There's another guy that he films with his buddy. So they kind of like riff during it, which would be yeah. fun too. But you'd have to have someone to always kind of be there riffing with. And that, that works out well. But you know still what? I'll be there in the future. Yeah. You're going to be my producer. I'll be there in the, in the future. Yeah. Well, but once the summer's over and summer does well, all that, I just wanna, I'm just going to just change gears a little bit. Yeah, man. I, I, I think... I think you'll really enjoy it from just what I believe about you. Also, I would love to learn how to edit and be your editor. I would love to do that. If I could just, I mean, I like coaching. I do. I do, do thoroughly enjoy, enjoy coaching. I'm, I'm cool with it. But if you're like, someone was like, Hey, I want to hire you as an editor and I want you to create content with me. I would, 100 percent and they're like all right i would i would do it because i love i like literally when we get off here today i'm gonna go eat and i'm coming back and i have this 20 i have a 20 minute youtube video that i'm working on and it has 135 canva slides that are green screen into it and that's just the beginning of this video yeah and it's it's it, this is a big video for the gym where all my athletes have to go and watch it and spoiler alert when you watch it, there's two secrets that you have to be able to tell me that you've actually watched this video. And if you don't know the two secrets, then I'm going to tell you that you're lying and then you need to go back and watch the video. And I'm going to tell them here right now. So if you listen to the podcast, you're going to get a little key into this. Oh, and it's the end of the podcast too. They probably already clicked off. How dare you? So in the video, the Here's objective- the secrets. Here's the secrets, exactly. There's, it's a 20 minute video that has 10 of the most important concepts that I think every athlete should know And when it comes to the sports performance and training. And the objective of this is to improve the quality of what edge is. But also when someone new comes in, they kind of already have a base of a lot of the stuff that I say instead of them hearing it over five weeks and other kids hearing me say the same stuff over and over. It's like, watch this before you start and you'll be in a good spot to start and get more of what we're doing. And the secrets are, I guess when I first really started doing YouTube videos every other week for the past year. In the beginning, one of my athletes, Gwynny, she, I call her Turbo. So her nickname is Turbo. So Turbo G is what I've always called her or more recently called her. I've been training her for years. And during the video, I would have a snail fly across the screen. It makes that noise. And as it's flying across the screen in the background, red flashes with Turbo behind it. And it was just a joke that I had with Gwynny. And it happens for two, three seconds in the video. And I put it in five videos. What's going to be in, it's going to be in this video. And I asked her last night, actually, I was like, is it okay if I also put your face, like, like put you being drugged by the snail? She's like, yeah. And I was like, I'll send you what it's going to look like before I actually put it in this video. And basically what it is, is going to be in the middle somewhere. And once in the middle, it's like, okay, what flew across the screen? Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. going to be very obvious and it's going to be loud. And if they don't say a snail, they haven't watched they didn't the video. Watch. They didn't watch. And then the next one is at the end. And at the end, it says, okay, here's the key in order to tell me, or the key word in order to tell me that you've watched the video. Well, now it's at the end. They could just skim to it. And it's going to be in the description, okay? But in the description, you're going to click a link. When you click the link, it's going to take me to the website. And on the website, it's going to have a keyword. Hold on. It's going to have the keyword. But I can change that keyword whenever I want. So if you ask your little buddy, what's the keyword? How do I figure this out? Guess what? I changed it. You didn't give me the right keyword. (laughs) it's just maniacal i mean like what do they get out of this they get information for free that is a ton of work okay that is definitely worth watching it's it's like it should i shouldn't even post it on youtube for free (laughs) i'm being serious it should not be on youtube for free is it for what it it, what i'm putting fair enough fair enough when you say 135 slides from Canva, I made animations in this thing, dude. Oh, there's wow. animations that happen in it. And there's stuff on the screen. And I've got it's 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 probably a 10 hour project for one video. So and that's yeah, so that's my editing passion. I love it. It's so much fun. And I just try to get better and better and better as best I can. 
Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen the improvement. Uh, and I like it. Thank you. I've been, I try. Just keep going. Just keep going. <laughs> and that's a wrap, dude. We, we, the, when I, I won't get into the, I had a rant, but we're yeah, 55 no. I'm 100. Yeah. No. Yeah. The, the rant was going to get me in trouble probably anyways. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Because I was going to clip it and tag. No, I wasn't going to tag. <laughs> it's nothing personal. It's just uh, the the topic at hand. I'll say the topic at hand and just leave it as a cliffhanger. We'll come back to it. There was a, there's a guy named Mike Boyle, which Mike Boyle is can very much considered almost the godfather of sports performance. He's in his 60s. Uh, he's trained tons of athletes and has always put out a lot of great information. Even he has books that we studied in school at college. And he has a podcast. And on the podcast, he's talking about how they don't do back squats. They don't do front squats anymore. They never load their spine with a barbell. And he kind of explains why. And, and, and then if you go to the comment section, it's interesting mm. and whether people disagree or agree and it could be oh, that, that, that one statement and looking at the comments of that video could be a whole hour long conversation of yeah. an opinion, but then also I could swing one way in certain areas and swing another way in a different way. So that was it. That's all I had. All right. That's a wrap guys. You don't get any sports performance tips this week. Go watch his video. It's just going to be out by the time the video is out. Oh, uh, yeah. It'll be out. Yeah. Go watch that video. You're getting free stuff. All right. Do it now and have a great week.